This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Sesame, don't meet strangers online unless you know exactly who they are. Like, make them show you, like, their license or some other form of authentic identification that could then be sent in through a database to prove that they are who they say they are. Encarta. That's a very specific and long name. Mm-hmm. You know what you should have done? You should have just shortened it to uh, Sesame 412. Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that number. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So today on our advice based co- uh, podcast here. No, yes, wait. We, we're, we're an advice podcast, everyone. Just letting you know. Yeah. We're changing things up. No, we're not. Um, I, I do want to give you the advice to not talk to strangers. <laughs> true. True. Yes. That, that is a good one. Yes. I mean, you know, you can talk to people and I'm assuming most of the people listening to this are adults because this is an explicit rated podcast, but, um, <laughs> right. Yeah. But, but, you know, tell your kids, you know, keep an eye on your kids. Maybe, you know, pay attention to what they're doing on the internet. That's my advice for today. And this is Mike's advice corner. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we got a comment on one of our old episodes that says we give bad advice, and I'm like trying to figure that out, really, because we're not an advice podcast. I'm pretty sure we're a pop culture review podcast. But anyways, so... That's what I thought we were. I yeah. thought we were doing that for the past six years, but apparently we've just been giving <laughs> bad advice to people that are ruining their lives, so... Yeah, I mean, you never know. <laughs> Somebody could be, you know, listening to our George of the Jungle 2 episode and... <laughs> <laughs> you know, get upset yeah. because we tell them not to, you know, kiss uh, apes. But um, anyway, so the <laughs> we told them not to commit bestiality. Apparently, that's bad advice. Yeah, that's so. I don't know. Sorry, guilty as charged. Actually, not guilty as charged because if you do it, then mm-hmm. you are guilty and it's a felony. But whatever. Yeah, uh, go ahead and commit felonies. That's that's the rule now. We that's the advice. Go uh-huh. ahead. Uh- so yeah. <laughs> Anyways, today we are. Doing another uh, look at a very special episode of a television sitcom from the 90s this time. Um, This time we are covering the television show Smart Guy, which ran on the, uh, was it the WB from uh, April 2nd, 1997 to May 16th, 1999. Um, You can find this episode on Disney Plus if you're interested in doing this. We are... The show is a show basically about a kid named TJ Henderson, who is a smart guy. He's a he's a young kid who uh, gets uh, placed into high school from like fourth grade because he's smart and uh, played by Taj Maori, um, who you may know from voices that he did on a bunch of different cartoons out there, including uh, Kim Possible, among other things. And uh, you guest starred on full house among other things before this and he's still acting he was in like the latest muppet thing that they did on disney plus i don't know what it was called it was like the one about the band the um muppet mayhem that mayhem band that they have the one that uh you know it's got like animal and drums and whatnot i never watched any of the episodes but (laughs) um 
it got canceled after one season. So unfortunately, but um, yeah, but he's still acting. And uh, it also starred uh, Jason Weaver as his brother, Marcus. Um, Tasha Vett Henderson was played by um, Essence Atkins. Floyd Henderson, his dad, is played by John Marshall Jones. And Morris L. Mo Tibbs is played by Omar Gooding. Yes. Uh, by the way, Taj Maori is the younger brother of Tia and Tamara Maori from Sister Sister. And, oh. and Omar Gooding is the younger brother of Cuba Gooding Jr. So, yeah. Okay. So All right. we have some little, I don't know, family connections in this mm-hmm. show. Um. So, uh, this episode that we covered is season two, episode 19, entitled Strangers on the Net, directed by Lex Paceris and written by Howard Nemitz. Yes. So, uh... Initial thoughts here after watching this uh, episode here, Sesame. It's okay. Uh, <clears throat> there was a part, there was like a B plot that I just hated so much, and it just like yeah. it made me free in a visceral manner, which mm-hmm. is weird because that's the part of the show that's not even about like the really serious nature of yes. the episode. <laughs> that made me more angry than the serious part of the show. Yeah, but my like, like I mean, I made a I made a note in my uh, notes that I. I only made a few notes, but the thing I said at the end is the show was good overall, but sometimes the juxtaposition of the comedic scenes with the serious scenes overwhelmed the topic of the very special episode part. (laughs) So yeah, it's like, we get that it's a sitcom, but it's like the comedy elements of it were like way over the top. And then you have the serious elements. It's like, they didn't balance out at all. Yeah, exactly. Like like with Degrassi Junior High, (laughs) excuse me, when Wheels' parents has died. They don't play the music at the end with like this really upbeat song. They just say yeah. silence. I mean, like, I, I mean, I mean to be fair to Degrassi oh, Junior High, that was a melodrama where this is actually a sitcom. So true, you know, true. So, yeah, um, the uh, you know, but but even in other uh, um, very special episodes that we covered, like there wasn't like I mean, you did have some kind of over the top stuff on like the Family Ties episode that we watched, but it wasn't like way over the top. It was kind of balanced in a way, you know, where. You had the serious, the seri- the, the the comedy flowed into the seriousness because you kind of only had one, like an A plot. You didn't really have a B plot. And I think the problem with uh, doing a good, very special episode is that you can't really focus on a B plot too much. Right. Yeah. 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 I get that. Yeah. It's only 21 minutes or something like yeah, that. Yeah. You, you, you don't need, I mean, the thing is, is you don't need to, I mean, it's, it, it, people are fine with, you know taking a week off from the the yuck yucks and going into you know a little bit of you know serious mode here to make sure that tj doesn't get molested um you know so yep exactly so um like what happens here in this episode sesame uh so i wrote in my notes the episode where tj wasn't so smart yeah yes. that's funny get yes. it because a smart guy get it mm-hmm. i thought that was clever yeah, very, yes, it is. Really I, I think we can stop uh, ever recording a podcast again because that's the most clever that's thing, it. clever thing you'll yep. ever say. That's um, the conclusion. That's the finality of it all. Yep. <laughs> and we can move on to we're doing advice columns, and then yeah, um, it's going to be dear, what about? dear Sesame, you know? Yep. It'll be dear, dear Ses- Sesame. <laughs> dear Sesame, my son went online and uh, met a met an adult who gave him bootleg video games. How should I handle this situation? Exactly. <laughs> Sell the games. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so the episode begins with EJ bugging his dad over a video game that he wants, which costs $55. That's another thing right there. So it seems like video games have pretty much cost the same amount as they did. So it's like, it's weird because yeah. like, back in the 80s and 90s, $55 would be like a lot more now with like today's money yeah it's but like uh, it's it's weird I, i've noticed that too like I, I remember when i used to work at a blockbuster like i would notice that like oh the new video game this year costs the same as the new video game five years ago it's like what the hell like and it's still the same like you know from 97 to 2024 you know it's weird <laughs> it's just yeah it's bizarre so it's just almost like 
it's almost like you can keep prices at a level and not actually decrease or increase it anyway. So, uh, I, I mean, it, 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 it like, could be that the whole idea of capitalism is just a mirage that was created by well, greedy people to uh, control uh, our country and the world. Maybe, but we can't talk about that because that's giving advice. So we don't want no, to I'm not advice. giving them any advice. I'm not saying what you should do. I'm not saying that we should eat the rich or anything. I'm no, just no. saying, um, wait. No, of course not. If anything, so in some sense, Marky for one tell is a hero because he's selling Blue Lake games. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. That's terrible. Wait, no. <laughs> That's ter- no. That's terrible. Well, but anyway, well, well so- technically, two things can be true. Hitler was that- a good painter, but I'm just saying. Yeah. No, he's okay. He's mediocre, but no, he's still like. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, he's bugging his dad over the game. His dad, his name is Floyd. He's like, no way. So then. Hey, TJ goes, he asks his sister, Yvette, to back him up and say that, hey, that's like a reasonable price for a CD-ROM game. So it's not like you were for like a Nintendo, it's for a computer. And, and so they do this in front of their father, who could hear this potential scheme being set up within three feet of him. What? A deal? Okay, that's a weird yeah. plan. And then, um, and then so oh, oh, by, Yvette plays by, a lot. By, by, by the way, $55 in 1997 is 106 61 in today's money exactly so i'm saying like that's a that's an expensive game you know and um and so yvette kind of plays along for a bit but then she's like oh well there's a pair of earrings at the mall that cost the same amount so why don't you you know buy that for me and then lloyd's like okay no i'm not gonna buy you anything so leave me alone let me paraphrase it of course yeah because he's like he's like a no-nonsense father you know type of dude but like with the heart of gold who's like not really harsh but he's also stern at the same time i'm not sure how he walks around with that heart of gold it's got to be what's that i'm not sure how he walks around with that heart of gold it's got to be it's got to be pretty hard yeah um i would say it's pretty difficult pretty pretty much weighing him down like even physically i mean i've heard heard of like gold teeth and stuff i've just never heard of a gold sure yeah but that's a little bit different that's just like a little bit you know yeah okay so yeah, so TJ and his friend Karen are hanging out in his room, uh, trying to come up with a plan to get some money to go buy a game. I think it's called like Starfighter Doctor or some bullshit. I don't it's remember called, exactly. Uh, it's called Starship Doctor. Okay, Starship Doctor. Got it. Yeah. And, and so Karen tells them, like, hey, I've been talking to this other kid in the chat room who is selling bootleg copies of the game for a cheaper price, like $20 or something like that. And TJ's like, uh, I don't know about that. That's kind of illegal and a crime. And then Karen's like, well, you're not a wuss, are you? And so that, of course, like, that that was like a thing in the 80s and 90s where if, like, someone called you a wuss, like, you had to do the most dangerous thing possible to prove that you're not a wuss. So, like, before that, I bet you, like, be- what's that? I was going to say, before that, Karen makes the the the, the, the best uh, um, observation in the whole episode. She's a, She's a very astute about how horrible capitalism is by pointing out that they are charging 55 bucks for a disc that costs two dollars to make exactly yeah and that's what sells him on the idea like okay yeah that's a good idea so then they go talk to this quote kid named marky 412 in the kids chat room yeah <clears throat> asking them if the game with a dumb name is still available <laughs> he said he says yes and he lists a bunch of other games that he has for sale as well. Like Tomb Raider was on there. I think there's a bunch of fake games as well. But yeah, I definitely I mean, saw no, Tomb I mean, Raider I, one and two. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, um, Starship Doctor is a is a stupid name compared to something like Crash Bandicoot. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a totally fine name. Yeah, yes. that name's fine. <laughs> and so he's like, yeah. Uh, and then Karen wants all of them because she is greedy, and there is the implication that her family is wealthy, as she made a comment about being able to find $20 in her dad's couch a moment earlier. I don't know much about the show. I don't know her family situation. So I'm, I'm not even left. sure how many episodes Karen even appears in. She might even, okay. She might just okay. be a, a, a random <laughs> friend who only is in one episode. So I mean, they seem to be really good friends, so they sh- she should be in a lot of episodes. I don't yeah. know, but like, <laughs> it would be kind of weird to like have like your best friend show up in only one episode. <laughs> it's like, you to spend all your time with them, but they just don't appear in the show. That yeah. would be kind of, you know, yeah, strange. And S- Sarita um, Monet Dickelman plays uh, plays Karen. Plays the, plays the case? Okay. Plays Karen. <laughs> cool. It's so blah 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 she's only in this episode that's it so it's like his best friend and then 
That's it. Okay, yes. that's stupid. <laughs> what a dumbass thing to do. Okay, so we used to do that in shows all the time. I mean, I, I, I always hated it. Like when they would have like a a story on a sitcom built up around this character. Like, like they'd have like a whole story that could have been built up about one of the regular characters on the show, but they bring in a character for one episode to build up this whole story, and then you never see that person again. Right. It, it's like, I know, it's this stupid bullshit. Um, yeah. And so, the dumb B-plot, this is the one that really made me angry, like in the visceral way I got really angry at this B-plot. There's a dumb B-plot where TJ's brother and friend bought a piece of shit car for $600 and are going to split ownership between the two of them. It yes. doesn't really matter, aside from the fact that TJ offers to quote, fix it for $65 so he can go buy the, the games. Yeah. Like they're going to go buy three. And like, and and uh, the sister, um, <clears throat> as, um, Tasha ends up, you know, getting part of the car too. And because she said she's going to, you know, pay $300 to get it fixed, but ends up being able to get a deal by paying 55 bucks to TJ to fix the car with a paper clip. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so it, yeah. In fact, really, that part of the story irritated me in a visceral way that I can't fully articulate, which is what I just said, but I can't even articulate the fact that I can't articulate it. And so TJ, quote, fixes the starter of the car with the pa said paper clip, uh, takes the money and then goes to, quote, Dog Burger, which is like a local restaurant, I guess, uh, with Karen to meet this mystery kid while wearing Orioles hat so that they could be recognized. But back then, you're like, I'm going to wear this T-shirt with this logo on it or whatever. You're like, OK, cool. <laughs> and so, but what do you know? The kid doesn't show up. It's a full ass man. Wearing what I call the pedophile jacket. I don't know why. It just looks like a weird jacket that a pedophile <laughs> would wear. I don't know. And then um, and then here's the thing, too, that kind of gets me. So they're like, well, why were you pretending to be a kid? And he's like, oh, well, I like video games. And guess who else likes video games? And they're like, and Karen's like, kids? And he's like, exactly. Okay, wait a minute. So this is 1998 we're talking about here, okay? So this isn't <laughs> like 1979 where like, if you're an adult who likes video games, people are going to call you a nerd or whatever. Like, at this point in time, it's well established that adults like video games. Like, yeah. this is not a, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he could. I mean, I'm sure there are some people of his own age that want to play Starship Doctor. Or Tomb Raider. I mean, those are fun games. Uh, yeah. Tomb Raider 1 and 2. Uh, not, not, as, mean, not as good as Starship Doctor. No, it's not. The fake game doesn't exist. No, it's not. I, as good I, as that. I have a Starship <laughs> Doctor poster on my wall behind me. You do? Okay, well, that's kind of yeah. Um, my my my, so, my favorite part is level three. Oh, really? Yeah, that's the level where what happens? The Doctor like dies or something? Or that there, there there's a whole uh, there's a love story. It it turns into like um like Starship Grey's Anatomy. It's like really weird. Oh, okay. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Well, that's kind of cool. Do you have dreams that you want to achieve, but are scared to do so due to self-doubt, fear, and other people's criticism? I have just what you need. You need a dose of the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, where I interview guests that will motivate and inspire you to stop at nothing to achieve your dreams. And always remember, if you believe... You can achieve. The Living the Dream the Curveball podcast is available on your favorite podcast app. Hey, everybody. Why don't you give the old Black Lincoln Collective podcast a listen? We're funny, we're fat, and we're here 24-7 at blcpodcast.com. Anytime you want to listen, anywhere, all your favorite podcast apps. Of course, we have a YouTube channel where you can stream live with the show. Check out our shorts. We're funnier the less you hear of us. That's been a Black Lincoln Collective podcast at blcpodcast.com. Hey, that's so, uh, it's so, yeah, just, I just, that part really kind of got to me. It's like, you know, like adults like video games and I know kids like games too, but like Tomb Raider 2 is objectively a good game. I mean, like, my brother and I would get lost just doing random shit in her mansion, like not even playing the game. Just like, yeah, like for example, like he, she had a butler. And so we would, the butler would always follow you around no matter where you went. And it was really annoying because you could always hear like glasses clink because he had like a bunch of glasses on like a metal tray. And so 
We would lead them down to the basement and just leave them there <laughs> and close the door. And you could still hear the glasses clink, even if you're like in a completely different part of the mansion. And, and we would do that all the time. Like we spent hours just doing that shit, you know? <laughs> nice. And, and so, yeah, you could have a lot of fun playing those games, even as an adult. I mean, yeah. we were. But still, this is the time when, you know, people just thought that video games are for kids and uh comic books are for kids and whatnot you know that sort of thing yeah exactly so tj you know he's a little uncomfortable at first you know being a smart guy after all or smart kid rather but he's he's assuaged by marky's charm and smooth talking not to mention the games tucked neatly in the brown paper bag that are calling his name quote marky and throws in an extra game for free just because they're quote orioles fans like okay that's kind of whatever fine and then they go back to TJ's house to play their stupid game, and he almost gives the game away, <laughs> pun intended. So and when Floyd comes, when Floyd comes into the room to see if everything is all right, as he heard screaming inside the bedroom, TJ then says, "We were just playing doctor," <laughs> and he heard screaming, and there's a boy and girl in the bedroom. It's so bad. And Floyd is like, "Wait, what the fuck?" And then he's like, "Oh no, I mean, like we're playing the game." Anyway, what happens after this? It's, 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 it's such a bad. It's such a bad, distasteful joke to have in this episode. Well, that, again, that goes into the whole Nickelodeon <laughs> bullshit where yeah, they're I mean, putting the, in adult jokes yeah, into... I mean, the, the, this uh, was a Disney-produced show, but still, it's like... <laughs> well, yeah, sure, but... <laughs> um, the uh, One thing I just wanted to mention, too, the, the actor who plays uh, Marky, Jim Fife, I just find it interesting. It has nothing to do with anything, but I just find it interesting. He's currently a teacher. <laughs> and I just thought yeah. that was interesting. I'm, I mean, I, I highly doubt many of his students watch Smart Guy, but I'm sure that they don't <laughs> from yeah. 25 years ago, 26 <laughs> years ago, whatever this episode yeah. came up. Almost, almost three decades ago, but still, it's like... I would never in my life play a pedophile. No. Act. I don't care how struggling I was. Yeah. Like, like getting a job. I'm like, I'm not... I know. It's, we're just not. It's like... It's, it, it's like, I don't know. I mean, I... I guess if the money was right. Man, no, I'm joking. No, no. I mean, obviously someone has to do it if there's a story that needs it. But like, I mean, because I'm, I've, I'm not going to be the. I've the, played a lot of like despicable people in, in people's short films and stuff since I've been in college until today. I mean, I played a I played a I, I was in a I was in a series of uh, of AIDS awareness commercials back in the day that aired like regionally, at least like they aired in different states in the Midwest during like MTV shows where I played a guy who was, uh, was basically sleeping around right. and giving people AIDS. So <laughs> yeah, I remember the most. Yes. So Hilarious. I'm just saying, you know, I guess the, the, the jump from that to playing a uh, PDF file is like, I don't know, you know, so yes. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, oh my God. Anyway. So, okay. We, we've got, uh, you know, he basically explains to his dad that, you know, he's like, I was able to buy these games and he's got all these different games and he's like, oh, wait. And, and, and you know, Floyd's like, oh, that's like $200 worth of games. And <laughs> he's like, no, I, uh, you know, oh, Karen bought the other ones, you know, and then you're know, like, oh, Karen's got money or something, you know, all this, whatever. It's <laughs> like, like, yeah, and I'm going to, you know, give you your food here and going to have dinner soon, you know, um, bread and butter on a tin plate or something, you know, so the uh, it's a bread and water served on 10 tin plates yeah because 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 um uh tj basically like insulted his dad in front of carrot saying oh wait, some parents actually give their children gifts like jesus yeah. dude <laughs> i know like, <laughs> by the way if you want to feel uh you know because because we're, we're so up here now we're we're like all happy i'm gonna bring us down right now i just learned today that in gaza right now most people are surviving on a slice of bread and a scoop of cream cheese a day. That's that's just horrible. Yes. I mean, yeah, I and, and, by survive, down, and by surviving, I mean barely. So anyway, so yeah, that's that, that's absolutely horrible. Yes. I just found that out on some news uh, podcast I was listening to. And I'm like, oh, this is gross. So yeah. anyways, uh, the um, so they 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 talk to uh, Marky again online. Marky messages TJ or something and saying that he's got other games and they want to go over to his place. He sends uh, TJ a message asking him if he likes uh, the new games, is what he asks first. And TJ replies that he loves them. Marky tells him that uh, he has two more games available. 
TJ agrees to go uh, to go buy them, and he wants to meet a dog burger again because you know that's where you meet people is at Dog Burger. Yeah, that's the place to be. Yes, Marky then tells them that he's unable to meet meet him there, and that he has to stay home working on a new game he is making. <laughs> he has to meet his deadline, and uh, of course. So so instead, he invites uh, Karen and TJ over to the house uh, to see the new game that he's developing, which they agree to do in secret because they are both so smart. Um, yep. <laughs> this show is called Smart Guy, after all. Yes. They uh, they obtain more money from their money machine, which is uh, <laughs> Mo, Mo and Marcus, um, in their stupid car. And he basically, they're trying to figure out why it won't go. And he's like, yeah, you're out of gas. <laughs> And they got 66 bucks so they could split it three ways between the the two guys and uh, his sister. And uh, now one car owned by three people. Yes. Yes. The smartest thing ever. Yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, I used to have a car that was owned by 55 people. It was really hard to get. <laughs> when there was one that we had that was owned by 365 people. Leap year yep. was, was kind of hard to figure out who was going to have it the extra day but you know true true it's a good point yeah yeah <laughs> so uh anyways they they go over to um marky's um house or whatever the fuck it is and <laughs> what is your house at a basement I yeah mean... i think it's the basement of the house i wasn't sure if it was like a storefront or a whatever it was you know and uh he shows the new game that they're working on uh which is a virtual reality surfing game called surf city yeah man surf city bro yeah at least it isn't like <laughs> you know space surf city or something you know um yeah so it uses a camera to capture the um image to uh to a video game so you know you can and it will imitate the movements of the person on there on this stationary surfboard that's what i call that i call it stationary surfboard yeah, that's what I would have called the game. Um, <laughs> yes, it's, it's a game where you just stand there. Um, that's because... <laughs> it. It's a stationary surfboard. You just stand on it. Yes. <laughs> Try so, to stay as still as possible. Yes. That's how you get points. Uh-oh, you both. So... <laughs> Uh-oh, TJ blanked. <laughs> nope, there it is. You you, you got negative points, though. So you fucking idiot. <laughs> so, oh, boy. So, so they're on, they're out, they're playing and they think it's all oh, so awesome, which it really wasn't. But, um, <laughs> maybe in 1997, 98, this was cool. I don't know, but I really don't know either if that would be considered like high end technology at that point. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so, so, uh, Mark, Marky had also told them that, you know, he wants them to try it out, that they'd be the first people to try out the game. The first. That's important right there. First, that, that line's important. Yeah. First kids to try out the game. And uh, he states that there's a huge problem when, um, with them, you know, he said they could be part of the game, but people don't wear normal clothes while, sur while surfing. I mean, it's true. It is a good point. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, you sort of wrongest reason possible. Yeah. And, he, and he says you should be wearing swimsuits. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he says that, you know, instead, because they don't have swimsuits there, they could do it in their underwear. Yeah, seeing that they're the same as jams, whatever those are. I think those are. Like I think long, he meant like long the jam. Short, I think I think jams are like they used to call that like like uh, long swim trucks used to be called jams or something. I don't oh, know. Okay. Yeah, right. um, it suggested giving it a giving it a try. Um, so TJ felt really uncomfortable about this idea. They did, right, like uh, yeah. He, this is when he actually kind of gets smart. Yeah, exactly, and. uh then he, he kind of, uh, Marky then talks about how he had a few friends who were also uncomfortable with the idea, but later loosened up to it while showing them a binder containing pictures of them. Jeez. And, and there he shows a girl named Melissa who was roughly the same age as the two kids, um, who was nervous about the idea of undressing too. Um, however, however, he was able to convince her over time that, you know, be more comfortable, you know, that way surfing with her shirt off yep so uh tj then realizes wait i thought we were the first people to try this, this game exactly um and uh so he points he points out that uh you know that that disturbing inconsistency you know it's very weird murky then um is claiming that oh no you're the first people to try out this version of the game oh yeah that's a good catch uh mm -hmm. <laughs> good deflection there mark 
idiot. Yeah. Um, so he said he had to fix some bugs in this game and everything. And then, um, so he's trying to convince them, uh, you know, still to take off, uh, their clothes. And so, you know, TJ, you know, is basically like, yep, uh, pedophile alert. And, um, like we're not, uh, we're, uh, we're going bro. Yeah. He, he states that, you know, <laughs> we, we have to go, um, you know, um, and, uh, then he's like, oh, Karen, you can stay. TJ has to go, you know? And, and she's like, yeah, okay. Like idiot. No, uh, yeah. don't stay there alone. <laughs> I mean, I don't care if she's not smart girl. She still should be smart enough to realize. I what mean, God, who knows there. what he would do with her and then probably like kill her and put her in her, his wall or some shit like that. Yeah. Like, you know, well, he might make no. her part of the, part of the video game forever. <clears throat> and ever. Exactly. You know, yes. That would be really fucked up. She'd be stuck in virtual reality. God damn. That would be, that's like, that's like a whole other, it'd be, it becomes right like there. lawnmower man or something. And, um, yeah, or, the, uh, wasn't it wasn't a fucking movie with, um, and Denzel Washington, I used to watch as a kid all the time, where oh, he was like a cop. Virtuosity. Like a virtu- yeah, yeah. I used to watch that movie it's, all the time when it, I was it, like It's 12. funny that I mentioned Lawnmower Man, and then you mentioned Virtuosity. They were both directed by uh, by Brett Leonard from Toledo, Ohio. Really interesting. Yeah. Who? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Before. Yeah. Yeah. Who walked out of a movie I produced? But anyway, so um. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, so he, he tries to get her to stay to help him like get past a level of this game ultra blaster claiming that, you know, they, they'd be smart. These kids would be smart enough to do that. And, you know, and in TJ's like, yo, we're, you know, Karen's coming over to my place for dinner, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> so yeah. she's like, no, I'm not. He's like, yes, you are. Yeah. And, you know, you fucking idiot. I don't want you to die here. And it's like, what's wrong with <laughs> you? Oh, you know, I got blo- low blood sugar, you know? So. Yeah, um, so, it's a good excuse. I mean, oh, yeah, it is. Um, what I don't get, though, about... I don't mean, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Oh, go but, ahead. So, all right, so what I don't get, though, about this, and, and I'm glad that he's kind of doesn't have any self-awareness because that means that EJ and Karen didn't get hurt. <clears throat> but, like, do none of these people have, like, any sense of self-preservation at all? Like, I, I've noticed even from, like, some of these, like, vigilante groups who, like, catch predators or whatever... Mm-hmm. And they just go and just divulge everything to these random people who don't have any authority over them whatsoever. They're just like, give them their passcodes to their phones. I'm like, dude, you don't have to talk to them. You know that, right? I mean, I'm I'm glad that you're stupid enough to do it, but like, yeah, you don't have any sense of self-preservation at all to like protect yourself. You're just like, yeah, sure. So he's like. Yeah, no sweat, bro. You can just leave and come back yeah, I mean, anytime you want that, to. That, but just remember, that's... don't tell anyone. That's the thing. Like, if if this was like an like a like an episode of like Criminal Minds or something, he would have like not let them go, and he would have you know chained them up to the wall or something, you know. So, I mean, seriously, that, I mean, I'm glad that didn't no, happen, I know. But it's, just the way he's like, yeah, sure, no sweat, bro. See you later. <laughs> just don't tell your parents. It's like, yeah, sure, that's yeah, they're definitely not gonna tell. <laughs> like, like, really, bro? Like, come on. And that's it's that's just what like, I'm saying. Nope. If, I mean. I never want to be in the mind of a pedophile, but you know, if I, exactly, <laughs> if like, I want to place myself in that mind as a, as somebody trying as to figure this actor, out, why, why but, would I, why would I allow my victims to just leave? It's just bizarre. And like, and plus two, he's done this enough times to have an entire binder full of pictures of random kids that he's invited over. But then that makes um, me wonder, how did he get that many kids and to do this without it? And, and, I'm assuming he didn't kill any of these kids. I'm hoping he didn't. So I really hope I mean, he the, didn't. Um, it's, it just seems very unlikely that not one of these other kids didn't say something to the cops or their parents or a teacher or something. Exactly. I mean, yeah. we're talking probably dozens at least, you know, and yeah. And even with someone like Melissa, I, 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 unless they're all like pictures of like two girls or something, you know, so maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess, but I don't know. And then, Anyway, that was the only point I wanted to make about that, where it's just like, he's like totally nonchalant. Oh, no problem, bro. Just come, come by whenever you feel like it, bro. I got a new game to work on called Surf City, um, well, the it, child of this shit. I mean, the thing is, the thing is like people in reality that are criminals do shit like this all the time, though. Like they don't realize how stupid they are. Um, like yeah, I, I, mean, I, I, I was listening to a, a podcast the other day behind the bastards and they were talking about this doctor on it that, uh, that had this and not even no a fake doctor he he basically called himself doctor but he wasn't a doctor and he was bilking um insurance companies for tons and tons of you know like millions of dollars and he he had this whole plan that he and this other guy put together to make this thing happen 
and he started getting money and he he connected this iPad that he gave to his son. It was connected to the cloud, so all of his email was on there. Internet. And his ex wife read all the email and all the email was about the plans oh, God. of how to do this. <laughs> so people are stupid. So <laughs> to say Yep. Yeah. But yep. The, this guy got this guy got away with that shit for years. If he would have been smarter, he probably would still be doing it. Um Right, yeah. So it's hard to say. Um, anyways, the next thing that happens is uh, TJ um, agrees. Uh, I mean, not agrees. Arrives home, uh, and his uh, his dad notices he's acting strange. Um, some shit was going on with the car subplot. I don't really give a fuck. It's um, boring. <laughs> so it really doesn't matter. The only yeah. reason, the only, the only reason why that mattered is for TJ to get the money to buy the games. That's the only yeah. like. That's it. And it didn't have to be so fucking, uh, I don't know, um, like just, over, the, over the top and, and unbelievable. So, um, so yeah, the, uh, he arrives, he arrives, uh, he, he arrives home. His dad begins to notice that he's acting strange and, um, he confronts him about it, um, with going not what's going on. And, uh, eventually, cause like TJ's like packing up his computer and basically, you know, saying that he, you know, is done with the internet completely and everything. He's packing up his modem and all this other stuff. And, uh, you know, Floyd makes a good point. His dad, he says, basically, you know, isn't that kind of like throwing the baby out with the bathwater? Um, right. You know, after he fight, after TJ basically confesses what happened and told them everything that, you know, basically I bought these bootleg games and this, this guy that wasn't a kid was selling them to us. And then he, you know, tried to give me in my underwear and, um, yeah. Yep. And so then later, um, detective Shevlin, arrives at the Henderson's home and um she calls the station she reveals that the man um TJ knew is um Marky 412 was actually an ex-con who had served time in prison for a similar incident previously i'm assuming he probably with that Melissa chick maybe yeah <clears throat> um she revealed but that wait a minute if that's the case why was he still allowed to have the picture that's a, that's a good point who knows <laughs> They're like, you know, you committed these crimes and you're going to serve prison. But hey, here's a souvenir. Hey, here's your little reward for the time you spend in prison. You know, just the. Yeah. Whatever. It's so stupid. Yeah. It, I was, know. The, it was the night. It was the 90s. Um, anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> basically, you know, he we find out that he was he was um currently on parole and that simply by talking to Karen and TJ, he was uh in violation of that. Uh, she then uh, uh, states that he ha- he'll he have no bail because he's in custody and mm-hmm. that no bail will be posted so he's gonna, you know, basically go back to prison. And uh, so TJ's good, to, you know, the, you know, his dad assures him that that's all good and everything and TJ thanks him and uh, says he's tired so he goes to bed. Um, yep. At, this is after, well, after uh, the detective basically, you know, calling TJ a hero for what he did and all this other stuff. You're um, a hero, eh? Yeah. Thank you. And uh, so later that night, TJ wakes up and he's like all freaking out because Floyd's not in his bedroom. Right. And uh, he tells uh, tells him he can't sleep and he's still feeling guilty about what happened. You know, Cause the thing is, I mean, that is true. Like people that are like scammed or, or different things like that's what that's why a lot of crimes go unreported is because people are embarrassed by what happened to them yeah they feel like yeah. they should have been smarter about the situation and i mean there's they're really smart people i mean notice all the smart all the like you know there's there's really smart people in cults for example you know so that <laughs> you know you wouldn't think like people you would think that are you know that are brilliant people and everything else but somehow they're you know voting for donald trump and um well the reason why i think a lot of smart people are in cults is because Smart people can make sense of almost anything, even if it's completely stupid, because they can use their logic abilities to basically create a narrative where that thing actually does make sense. Whereas yeah. someone who is not very smart would not really be able to construct a narrative like that that mm-hmm. makes any sense. I mean, it's it's weird, right? It kind yeah, I mean, of I mean weird. And, and, and I guess Marky kind of did that a little bit with the whole thing where he was just basically trying to say that, you know, if you say something to your dad about these bootleg games, you know the law will be involved and you know so that kind of makes sense if you break it down that way i mean basically yeah telling 
TJ, you're going to get in trouble because you bought bootleg right. games, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, but anyway, so, so he's, you know, he's freaking out and, you know, he goes downstairs and he's hanging out with his dad and his dad basically, you know, says, you know, that, uh, that, um, that while, while TJ talked to Marky before getting to know him and that was not okay, noting that he didn't act like a stranger. So, and mean, that's what, uh, TJ was saying, you know, he didn't act like a stranger. So they basically doesn't feel like he is one. That's the kind of the danger of the internet, especially, you know, this is the nascent days of the internet, you know? So Again. it was like, you know, everybody, we, we, we've got it to the point now where <clears throat> everybody feels like they know each other and, but nobody actually really knows each other, you know? Cause like, I mean, and, yeah. Cause like, yeah. He, you know, I've, I've, I've got, uh, you know, I mean, a, as you know, people listening to this probably are, you know, I've got tons of people that follow me on Facebook that think they know me based on the things I post on Facebook, but do they really know me? No, they just know what I post on Facebook. It, you know? kind of reminds me too, when I, I made a, this is way back in the days of MySpace. You put, you made a group once that was really popular. Yeah. I made a group that was kind of popular. Seems like it was at that time in MySpace where, yeah, just seemed like easier to uh -huh. get more people on board. I don't know. Yeah. And, and so like, you know, for a while I thought people knew me enough to kind of, you know, trust me and kind of like understand my point of view or something like that. But <laughs> I didn't realize when I made the group, it was, it was a group for, uh, Muslims and Baha'is to kind of just talk to each other. It's yeah. what it was basically to kind of like bridge the gap between yeah the Fred that both communities kind of have towards each other. But anyway, <laughs> but it's often seemed like it's only one way when it's actually both yeah. ways. But and so, uh, and, um, and so I had the thing where I didn't really understand much about like, you know, creating groups or what like that. And so I had, a, I guess I had the thing where it's automatically checked that anyone who joined the group could upload pictures to the group as yeah. like part of like the, and so apparently uh, like these, these few Islamophobes joined the group or at least just found it. And so they started uploading all this Islamophobic garbage. Yeah. When I was in sleep. And then, so I wake up to like dozens of messages of like death threats because oh, like, yeah. I'm just, just, you know, like degrading the prophet Muhammad and, and I'm like, uh, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? And he's like, look at the pictures. And I go, what? what? And I go, oh, okay. Uh, no, I didn't upload any of these pictures at all. And shit like that. And, and, I mean, it, and, and it's gotten to the point now on, on Facebook, especially where about 90% of the things that are posted are just, you know, spam or, um, Not or, or scams, you know, people, people posting pictures of, you know, lost dogs that aren't actually lost or I, a lot of people fall, fall for that one. Yeah, and then, because then it ends up turning into a, you know, some other kind of scam once you post it on your timeline. But, uh, or or just, you know, the, the whole thing with, like, you know, you got, you know, phishing scams in the email. You got different things. It's like, the danger is, the, the, the internet is a dangerous place, but there are good things with it. So, you ba basically, the whole, like, you know, throwing the baby out with the bathwater is, like, kind of a good thing to put there. But you got to be more vigilant and aware now than you ever had to be even in 1997, yeah. you know. So it's, it's kind of scary. And I mean, I think, uh, like, like there's, uh, there's actually laws, like I'm not a big fan of Ron DeSantis, but he actually put a law into place in, in, uh, Florida where you have to be like 16 years old before you can have a social media account. Yeah. I, unfortunately I think, but I think, I think he has other ulterior motives, but the, but the basic, I sure the basic, are. the basic idea of it, I actually agree with, but the thing is, is there's, there's going to be millions of ways to get around that. Oh, of course. Just like watching porn when you're 15 and you just oh i'm 18 years old sure you know yeah whatever. i mean there, there's there's <laughs> but i'm sure there's going to be ways to get around it but it, it is a good thing i mean i think if, like i mean i i have no right to give advice in parenting at all because i never plan to have kids but unless you know things change in my life who knows but um the uh, the um the main thing is it's like i don't think you know people letting their their 10 year olds have a Facebook account or whatever is a good idea or have a, you know, a TikTok or a Snapchat or a ding dong or a who's a what's it or whatever they are nowadays. You so know? What's, that's a good one. Yeah. Like, uh, or chair, <laughs> chair's a new one. Chair. Yeah. Is it? Oh, chair. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it's not. Oh, but, uh, and yes. The, I was 14 when I got on AOL.com. But the thing is, AOL back then, like social media wasn't as like, 
profound as it is now. Like everything was on AOL. Like they had chat rooms, they had like individual chats, they had email, <clears throat> but like that was pretty much it. Like everything yeah. else, you had to go to actual websites to do like certain, like, or to look at certain and, things. Like, and there really wasn't like as many people online at that time too. So it was like, a right. Lot. But, but it's still, you, you do have things like examples, like in this episode where, you know, I at think, that time where people were trying to get to kids and people did. And I just think it's even more prevalent now than it ever was. And it's, right. you know, it, it it's just. It's just more reason that parents should be more digil- diligent with their kids and pay attention to them. Um, I know it's harder nowadays because people have to have like four jobs to actually live. But um, it's right, a, exactly. So it's 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 really it, it's basically my message here and my advice. No, I'm joking because <laughs> I don't give advice. Is um, that my message basically here is that capitalism and um, and uh, neoliberalism and um, a bunch of <laughs> other isms have destroyed this country yeah and uh and made this uh place uh living hell and um made it easier for people to uh take advantage of kids and uh yeah yep yep i don't know what that was and i know it's a downer but yeah anyways uh this episode you know teaches a good lesson i think um you know and 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 that and that important lesson is is that you should not buy a car for six hundred dollars um that's the real lesson of it yeah (laughs) That's the real lesson of this episode. I had to try to make it lighter here. Anyway, so yeah. Anyways, folks, uh, do you have anything else you want to say here about this uh, sesame before we wrap things up? Uh, nope. Okay, so uh, folks, if you have any other suggestions of uh, very special episodes of your favorite sitcoms that you would like us to cover, um, let us know. Message me at Mike at ColinPark dot com. I am um, also like send me a message if you're interested. Um, or anywhere on our social media or anything. Um, if you're interested in a uh, in a email newsletter from us, I'm thinking of beta testing that soon and seeing if people would like that. So then you would be up to date on our newest episodes and any uh, updates of our show and uh, you know things like that. Um, yeah, and you can feel free to message me. I'm not going to try to sell you bootleg video games or anything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just go to all two real two dot com for all the information about. All of our stuff. You can subscribe to the show. Give us a five star review if you can, anywhere you can. Um, check out our Patreon and our T Public. Good ways to support the show. You know, share the show, spread the word, subscribe, um, do all that good stuff. You know, and uh, just remember, folks, that I love you. Marky four one two doesn't love you. No, Sesame loves you. And until next time, bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real Two podcast. A Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.